coming to you from the heart of America, beautiful Kansas City, Missouri. Welcome to the Hands of Christ Church Sunday morning worship service with Apostle Charles Brown and Pastor Jackie Brown. We're joining the service already in progress. Gracious God, my Father, and thou who knows all, sees all, and hears all. Thou God, beside thee there is none other. Lord, as we come before you as an empty pitcher before a full fountain, I come acknowledging that you are mine and I'm yours. I'm asking you, Lord, to put me in front of the cross, not behind, in front of the cross. That they not see me, but him who dwelleth in me. That him that might be glorified and magnified. Now, God, I'm asking you, let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight. Thou art my Redeemer and my Savior. And this I ask. In the sweet name of Jesus, I pray. Amen. Amen. And amen. Praise God. Give an honor first to my Heavenly Father, who all honors due to my Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ. Mm, he's my everything. To the divine Holy Spirit that teaches us and guides us to all truth. My very fine pastor, Pastor Brown. Amen. Praise the Lord. Mother Evangelist, laymen's of the gospel, mothers, deacons, friends, officers, all the children of God. Yes. Mm, it's a privilege to be here. Yes. Just to say that name, Jesus. Power in that name, Jesus. Mm, mm, mm. But I'm so glad to be here today. Oh, yes. Praise God. Because listen, God is good. And all the time, God is good. If you look around today, this country is in a, it's in a world of trouble. Sickness on every hand. Mm. So many divers of diseases, and God is just trying to tell this country, get in order. But yet we still reject his word. God still saying, get in order. We still reject him. We want to take God's name off of the money. We want to take, we've already taken the prayer out of school. We've done all these things, but God is still saying, get ready. Praise God. The churches, God is speaking to. They're turning the dead there to the truth. But God is still saying, get ready. The same gospel has been preached for over 2,000 years is still saying, get ready. Because Jesus is on his way back. Oh, yes, he is. God is letting the church know he's on his way. Praise God. But he's still letting the church know there's victory in his name. Amen. Oh, yes, it is. Amen. Praise God. Listen, I tell you, I didn't think, and I'll tell you something. Like, Listen, you might be seated. Praise God. You know, I was telling my wife, I said, I had been had a little cough all week. Then turned around, I called the doctor just for some cough medicine or something to take the little cough away. Next thing I know, I got sick. And I said, hold it, wait a minute. <laughs> you think you have power over me? You have none. See, we can't give Satan power over us. Amen. He was defeated on the cross. Amen. And then if you think about it, in the book of Job, the first chapter, it tells you. Satan had to go to, go to God to put his hands on Job. So what about us? You must understand, we are, at times, we could be our worst enemies. Mm -hmm. Because why? We don't know how to use the tools that God gave us. He's given us tools. He's given us tools, and then on top of that, he has given us power. He has given us unlimited power. Oh, yes, he has. 
so much sicknesses right now, you know what? Because he gave us the tools to use. He already said in the name of Jesus, demon tremble. He already told us that. That power, I heard somebody sing a song, that power in the blood. There's power right there. But what we, nah, we don't want to use that. But understand, we can be our worst enemies. That's right. Don't you know you can lay hands on your own self and be healed? Don't you know that? Why? Because you got power. Why? Yes. So praise God. Listen to that. I just want to let you know. Listen, we're not going to hold you long. Praise God. Definitely. Uh, then we have the Bible. Turn with me to the book of Daniel. The book of Daniel. Yes, a great prophecy book. Mm -hmm. The book of Daniel. Let's look at it. Uh, let's, can I say, can I say, can I say, can I say. Let's look at the uh, sixth chapter. And I'm going to, I'm going to be reading the sixth chapter, 10, 11, 18 to 24. When you have it, say amen. amen. If you don't, say hold up. Uh, okay. And, and it reads as follows. Now when, when Daniel knew that the writing was sick, was signed, he went, into, he went into his house and in his window being opened in, the, in his chamber toward the Jerusalem, he kneeled upon his knees three times a day and prayed and gave thanks before the, his God as he did, what is that, a four time, which means every time. Here it goes. Let's look at the 11th verse. Then those men assembled and found Daniel praying and making supplications before his God. Now listen when I said before his God, 18th verse. Then the king went to his, his palace and passed, the, and passed the night fasting. Neither were instructed of music brought before him and his sleep went from him. Oh, he couldn't sleep. Yes, yes. Then the king arose early in the morning and went in, the, and went in haste into the den of the lions. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. In the den of the lions. Mm -hmm. Then said Daniel unto the king, O king, live forever. My God has sent his angels and has shut the lion's mouth. Look at this. Mm, mm, mm. That they had not hurt as hurt me for as much as before him as innocent was found in me. And also before thee, O king, have I done no hurt. Then was the king excitedly glad, exceedingly glad for him and commanded them that should take Daniel up out of the lion's den, of the den. So Daniel was taken up out of the lion, out of the den, and matter of hurt, and no matter of hurt was found upon him, because he believed in his God. Amen. I'm gonna stop there, I'm not going 24, let's stop right there, because he believed and his God. The first of all, I'd like to use today, if it's God's divine will, Daniel's relationship with his God. Daniel's relationship with his God. Listen, Daniel, that God had found favor in this young man. 
Also, Daniel, listen, the author, the writer of this prophetic book. You must understand, Dave, Daniel, Daniel, listen, Daniel was one of the major prophets out of the Old Testament. Daniel had, God had blessed him with many, many gifts. And let me say this today. When God, when you have a relationship with God, there's nothing good God will hold back from you. Can I say that again? There's nothing good that God will hold back from you. It's just like, listen, I looked at the word relationship, and that's real. It lets me know the relationship means that you have a re, that you're related. Well, how can I, Daniel, be related to God? Well, God called him. God laid his hands on him. I, let me say this this morning. Listen, when you was out there, when we were out there in the world, and we were all out there, listen, everything we done, good or bad, God allowed it to happen. That sounds crazy, doesn't it? Yeah, God allowed it to happen. Remember one thing. God knows everything because he's God. Yes, he does. I don't care if you jumped up and hit somebody's head with an axe. God knew it. He did. When you stole from your parents, God knew it. Come on, somebody. I know this. Don't tell me you ain't never had it. Okay. Listen. Everything, like I said, bad or good, God knew about it. And listen, even today, God knows. He knows this right here. He knows that heart. Good or bad, he knows about it. Many of us today, we pray to God, but the thing about it is, it's not a sincere prayer to God. God listens and hears a sincere prayer. I always say it's this, that from the heart reaches the heart of God. Well, how does God have a heart? Well, the Bible lets us know in Genesis, the second chapter, when he said, let us make man in our own image and our own likeness. When God created Adam, Adam had a heart. When God created Eve, she had a heart. So, in other words, they were made in the what? Image and the likeness of God. So God has a heart. God has compassion for his people. Many a times, God's people have done everything that was not pleasing, but he still loved them anyhow. How many times that you've done things and God's still forgiven you? Oh. Just think about this. How many times you asking God to take something away and as soon as he takes it away, you blur back out. How many times have you asked God to help you from stop cursing, stop drinking? Come on, somebody. Stop smoking. Stop committing adultery, fornication. How many times have we asked God, forgive us, lusting with the eyes? How many times have we asked God, forgive me? Well, listen, the scripture lets me know in the book of Matthew, Jesus said, I'll forgive you seven times 70 times 70. He'll say, I'll forgive you. But, there's a but. But you got to forgive your brothers and sisters. That's right. You got to forgive. If your heart ain't right, don't pray to it. Because listen, God is not going to hear it. 
The scripture said, blessed are the pure in heart, but they shall see God. This is what it's about. God looks. He looks at our heart. Yeah, he knows it. He knows that our heart when it was filthy and raggedy. He knew that. He knew all the things that he knew about us, but yet he still loved us. My God, I tell you. Now, if that ain't enough to turn over the benches, I don't know what is. That sounds like that unconditionally love that he loved us. Yes, yes. The scripture says in Romans, why we were what? Yet sinners. Yes. Christ died. He gave it all up. Yes. Gave it up for you and me. Yes. Was we worth it? No. I speak for myself then. I know I wasn't. But he gave it. Yes. He looked beyond right. faults. Uh-huh. My faults. I can only speak about me. But he looked beyond it and he saw needs. Yes. He knew that I needed a savior. Yes. Amen. What about you? Amen. He knows what we need. Yes. Right. People run around here talking about, well, God, God, God ain't blessed me. Yeah, God ain't blessed you because why? Sometimes we don't ask. They keep saying it. The Bible lets us know, Matthew asked, and it shall be given unto you. Uh-huh. Seek, and you shall find. Knock, uh-huh. and the door shall be opened. Yes, yes. God wants to bless you. Amen. Hmm. My God, my God. Yes. Uh-huh. Hmm. Yes. Hmm. Oh, I can tell you. God is telling me some things right now. Listen. Hmm. Mother Lamb, stay close to God. God going to reveal some things to you. Mm-hmm. God, some things you don't know, God's going to show it to you. The things you didn't know, God's going to show it to you. There are some things that you didn't know about that you finally knew about, but there are some other things that's going to come to pass. Does that make sense to you? But look. <laughs> yes, Lord. You're trying. God's going to bless you because you're trying. Listen, Daniel had some companions that he was with. The Bible lets us know that, listen, Daniel, listen, he had a, a, a degree, not a degree, but Daniel had a, a covenant with Nehemiah, one of the minor prophets. Daniel was a priest. He knew a lot. Because why? Before he was in captivity, listen, his parents sent him to school. Taught a lot of things. Listen, I don't have to go, I, I did, but I don't have to go to theological school to understand God's word. God is just to give. He said any man or woman, lack of wisdom, how many times do you read God's word and don't understand it? Oh, I guess everybody do this. But God, listen, God will give if you ask. I know what you'll do. Because listen, when you read God's word, you're reading God. Does that make sense? When you read God's word, it's God. God speaking. When we obey God's word, then God will bless you. When we obey, a lot of times we see some things and God shows some things. We don't like it. And what we do? We walk away from it. A lot of times we hear things from the church. Come, 
Come from the pulpit. We don't like it. We don't hear it. We don't want to go back. I don't want to hear that. We close the deaf ear. Why? Because first thing it is, how do I know God said that? I run across so many times the young people are saying today that uh, how do you know God wrote, wrote the Bible? <laughs> how do you know he didn't write it? And that's what I throw back on. Listen, if the Bible tells me that he did, that's good enough for me. I've had so many questions and answers asked about the birth of Jesus. But listen, what it says here, I believe it. I'm not going to add anything. I'm not going to subtract anything. What it says, that's what I believe in. And listen, what I believed in all this time, it brought me this far. So I know God's word is true. Listen, what we must understand, Daniel, mm, a dreamer, God gave him dreams and he was a visionist. How many of you had dreams and don't understand them? Did you ever ask? Yeah. Ask God to show me what the dream? How can I interpret the dream? Mm -hmm. Did you ever really ask him? Yes. Yes. Understand, God has somebody. If you ask, all you got to do is be still. Amen. And somebody can tell you about your dream. Mm -hmm. Yes. King Nazareth. Nazareth, he had this dream. He told it, everybody, he called them all. Astrologers, he called them all. From all over, he called them. He said, if you can tell me about this dream, this is what I'm going to do for you. I'm going to make you, I'm going to sit you up there with me. You're going to wear the best because you're going to be with the best. Everybody tried to interpret their dream. They couldn't do it. Let me tell you something. God knows God always have a ram in the bush. Oh, that's God. Listen, don't you know that God has a plan for you? Don't you know that? A lot of you don't know that. God didn't just put you here for a reason. He put you here for his glorification, that he be glorified. Yes, he did. And God knows about you. Well, I want to be. You know, so you ask God to let his will be done. Yes. Well, listen, on my job, I'm not making enough money. Let God's will. Be done. Uh -huh. Listen, God will do everything. If your heart is right, God will do it. Yes. If you want more money, God will give it to you. But it's got to be in his will. Yes. Not ours. Uh -huh. We want everything in our. Mm. But we must understand God is not a microwave. You can't turn him, push a button, and he goes, it's, it's instant. It don't work like that. God works on his time, yes, yes. his place, yes. that's him. God works like that. A lot of times we don't understand why things are happening to our lives. We don't understand it. It ain't for you to understand sometimes. Because why? Because it could be God's will in your life. Well, listen, I lost my job. Well, pray. Stay close to God and pray. Why? Because God got something better up the road. I guarantee you that. Listen, the Bible lets us know, I believe that's in the book of James, the prayers of the righteous availeth much. Listen, 
All you got to do is stay in the will of God and God will answer your prayer. Why? Because that's God's will. Why? God's not a man that he should lie or he would lie or he could lie. God going to lie. Because why? He hates sin and God is not sin. God's all perfect. But listen, they turned around. Everybody, the astrologers, everybody was around trying. Boy, I want that money. I want them. I want to be in the, up there with the king. Oh, I want. But nobody could comprehend the dream. The king got mad. He said, if you don't do it, I'm going to kill all of you. Matter of fact, I'm going to kill you. I'm going to kill your wife and your children if you can't interpret my dream. Boy, that's really rough. I'm glad I ain't in them days. My God. Woo. But listen, they still couldn't. There's a man, a captain of the guards. His name was Antioch. Antioch told the king, yeah. there's a man named Daniel, the boy named Daniel. Hmm. Who's God? Well, then give him the victory. I put it like that. Yeah, the king asked for him, bring him here. Look at Daniel. 16, 17 years old. What does he know about interpreting dreams? Listen, young folks. Hey, not y'all. Y'all are old. Cassiano. Hello. I want to let you know. God will use you if you let him. Daniel was 17 years old. If you think about David, look at David. He was young. Mm -hmm. Jeremiah the prophet was young. God does not have a respect of a person. No, he don't. No, he, listen, all he wants is a willing heart. Daniel went to him, and the king started telling him. He said, wait a minute, hold it. You got to give me time. I got to go and pray. Well, first thing I would say, well, Daniel, why are you praying, telling the king your prayer? That's what got you in trouble in the first place. The degree that came out. But anyway, but Daniel went to him. Went to his God, prayed to his God. Hear what I said? Pray to his God. Not Baal. Not the snakes, not the rocks. He prayed to his God. And God answered his prayers. Went back and told the king about the dream. Next thing you know, here comes Daniel out of the king's court, dressed down. Diamonds and rubies all over his finger. Boy, 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 can you imagine? He had royalty all. And then God, then he said he's going to put him up there with him. He was over all the government, the princes, the kings, the captains. He was over all of them. That's pretty good. But understand, jealousy come in the picture. Always somebody, listen, when you start prospering, here he goes, here he goes. When you start prospering, I, let me say it like, when you come out there with a new car or some new clothes, first thing somebody gonna say, She's selling dope. Something happening. How'd she get this kind of money to drive like this? Well, listen. 
It's God that I serve. He's able. Oh, yes, he is. Listen, what I go back and say, ask, and you shall receive. Listen, Daniel did one thing. Listen, he obeyed God. Uh-oh. Obedience is greater than a what? Sacrifice. Daniel obeyed God. His word. He took God at it. And listen what happened. Came out, like I said, he was ready. Everybody, they began to watch him. They said, we got to get this boy out of here. Mm -mm. Yes. Let me tell you something. Every time, I think that's in Romans. I think that's in the book of Romans. Yeah. Every time that I do good, evil, evil, I tell you what, I'm going to tell you, say this. When you start prospering in the Lord, your children are prospering in the Lord. Your house looks like it's prospering. Everything's, I'm going to tell you something, always somebody. And I hate to say this, but it's always somebody, somebody in you know. Somebody might be a relative that's going to be saying, how did they do this? Because why? Jealousy don't have no respect of a person. Jealousy. Folks hate to see you prosper in the Lord. The devil don't want to see you prosper. Nobody don't want to see you prosper. You get a dime, they're going to talk about you. Oh, don't get a dollar. Oh, Lord. Oh, Lord, look at here. Oh, I know. You all that. You think you all that. I am. I am that. I am all that and some in Christ. But see, the worst thing is your relatives because they know you're better than anybody else. They gonna first thing gonna pick up the phone. That phone go crazy. It goes inside out, inside out, inside out, inside out, inside. By the time it comes, you done hurt so much, it done changed. But that's all right. I still do one thing. I pray for them with spitefully misused. I just pray for them. Well, hatred is of the devil, it ain't. How can you love somebody? And they hate you. Jesus said this. Love them who spitefully misuse you. Love them anyhow. I don't care what they done. Love them. Listen, the average person that, listen, that speaks against you, when you love them, they can't stand it. But ain't nothing they can do. Because the first thing they're going to say, how is she going to be sitting up there going to speak to me? And I don't say all this about it. But that's the love you got. That's Christ coming out of you. Walk on your job. They turn their nose up at you. Well, what is that? You what? Mm, mm, got a new ring. Your fingernails look different. Every little bitty thing, they're going to nitpick. Because why? Your gift look good on you. Can I say that? It looks good. It looks good on you. But listen, the enemy hates to see God's people prosper. Mm -hmm. Oh, yes. Listen, they turned around, all of them, the captains, all of them, prince, all of them, they had to try to find something against Daniel. But one thing, listen, the Bible lets you know that Daniel was, was blemished. He was blemished. Daniel, listen, as long as he was doing God's will, they couldn't find no fault in him. But they turned around, listen, this is how it works. They turned around, went to the king, and told the king, we need a degree. Now, they saw Daniel. See, 
They saw Daniel praying to his God, praying in supplication to his God. How many times today people see you praying? Have you ever got on your job and start praying? Oh, I guess, I guess I'm the only one. See you praying. What, what, what you doing? I'm doing something you should be doing. But listen, I don't care where I'm at. If I want to talk to Jesus, you can't stop me. I'm going to pray. I'm going to tell him all about it. That's what I'm going to do. I'm going to pray to him. Listen, I, sometimes in your life, you ever just pray tears run down your eyes because you've been misused and abused, been talked about. That's when you get a prayer through. But why? Because it's, it's sincere. You're talking now. And that's what God wants to hear. But listen, here it goes. Daniel went, they went and they seen Daniel praying. Three times a day, Daniel's praying to his God. Not to the God of Baal. Not to the goddess. But to his God. Oh, they ran back. Oh, King Darius, didn't you make a decree? We found Daniel, your servant. Here you go, make it easy. Your servant. He prayed to his God. Well, King Darius looked at him, said, okay. But see, the king knew about Daniel and his relationship with his God. Mm -hmm. That's the same Daniel that went to God and prayed and got the interpretation of the dream. But he had to please the people. Here it goes. We sometimes, we want to turn our head, mix things up just to please people. Well, I ain't doing that. I don't care about that. I'm going to please God. But here Daniel turned around. The king said, go get Daniel, bring him here. I, I, listen, I got some for him. But in the king's heart, he knew about Daniel's relationship with his God. They turned around, brought Daniel to the king. The king's heart was sovereign because why? He didn't want to do that. But he did it to please the people. Threw him in the lion's den. Mm, mm, mm. How many times you been in the lion's den? How many times you been there? Well, well I ain't never been in the lion's den. How many times you ain't had no food on high? How many times you ain't had no food on your table? Light bill, water bill, telephone, gas bill. Notice on your house. You ready to take your car. How many times have you been in the lion's den? Come <laughs> But Daniel had a relationship Amen. with his God. Yes. Yes. Relation means connection yes. with his God. Yes. See, it's good to have a connection Amen. with your God. Yes. Well, listen, what do you mean? Listen, when I have a connection to God, I can get on my knees. Yes. No matter how you treat me, I can still get on my knees. Yes. Okay, I lost my job. Get on my knees. Okay. Talked about. Get on my knees. Miss Hughes. Get on my knees. All the time. 
pray to God. Daniel prayed three times a day. I pray more than that. Why? Because I find myself prayer is the key that unlocks the door to unlock the door to God's heart. Prayer does. I pray because why? The Lord puts it on me to pray. He shows me faces. I pray. Why? Because listen, he made us co-shepherds to the shepherd. It's our job to be the watchman on the wall. It's our job. When you sleep, we pray. Every time the king was right there. And guess what happened? Threw him in the lion's den. The king, they sealed it. Make sure somebody wouldn't come back and bring him out of it. The king fastened and prayed. Listen at this. He threw him in the lion's den. But he, fast, he was right there fasting with Daniel. Hello there. Sometimes God will make your enemies your footstool. But he turned around. Got up early that morning. Hasting, they said, in a hurry. Went to the large den. Oh, that was Daniel. Daniel was there praying. Praising God. Listen. Praising is what I do. Daniel knew that God brought him out. Daniel knew that he had a relationship with his God. King jumped up. Oh, Daniel. Daniel stepped out. Clothes looked like there was when, when they went in. Skin wasn't broke. Legs wasn't scratched. Daniel walked out and said, Oh, King, live forever. Why? Because the God that I serve, He's able. King looked at him and said, Oh, Daniel, you're Yo, dog, yo, God. Well, I worship. Mm. Oh, listen. God will make your enemies come to you. I begin to think a relationship with my God. Joe ran over to me and he said, Listen, I got a relationship. With my, yes. my God. Yes. They took everything that I had. But I held on. Held on. Yes. To my God. Yes. My wife told me. I look like a fool. Come on now. <laughs> you look at you Job. Your limbs boiled. You look dead Job. Uh-huh. Job said but. but. The God that I serve. Yes. He's able. Yes. Job told me, he said, yet, though he slay me, I'm going to trust him. Naked I came. Listen, woman, I came naked into this world. I ain't going to leave with nothing. Woman, you sound foolish. Have you forgot what God has done for you? Job went on and said, I, woman, I got a relationship with my God. Yes, yes, yes. Yes. Daniel, yes. David ran across me and told me, he said, the Lord is my shepherd. Yes. 
I got a relationship with him. I shall not want. David told me, he said, Yea, though I walk through the valley, there's a shadow of the death. I fear. Why? I got a relationship yes. with my God. Yes. I got that. Yes. Well, what do you mean? Yea, though I walk through the valleys of the shadow of the death, I fear no evil. For thou art with me. What are you saying? I got a relationship. With my God. I looked around and a little kid came beside me and said, I got a relationship with my God. Jeremiah come and told me. He said, Get. When I was yet in my mother's womb, he knew me. In other words, God laid his hands on me. He knew me and I began to know him. Amen. Why? Because I got a relationship yes, yes. with my God. Yes. Well, I can look back in my life and I'll let you know I got a relationship with my God. Yes, yes. I want to say to you today, what about you? Do you have a relationship with your God? Can you say I know him and he knows me? Yes. Can you say that today? He, he holds me in the cradle of his arm. Can you say that I got a relationship with my God? Well, how do I know that? Because listen, the Romans told me in Romans, they said them. He told me. So I got a relationship. Why? Because I told the Lord when I accepted him in my life, I gave him all of me. Because why? He gave me all of him. Yes, yes. yes, I have a relationship. Do you have this relationship yes. with your Lord? Yes. This is what I want to ask today. Do you have one? And if you don't today, come on. We'll, we'll, we'll teach you how to have that relationship. Yes. Yes. Well, if death knocks on your door, you didn't say I'm going to see the king. Am my life worth living for? Because why? I don't really know him. I don't know if he knows me. That's the thing. I don't know. I, I've read about him, but I don't know if my name's on the Lamb's Book of Life. I don't know. I don't know if I'm going to see him. But the Bible says every knee shall bow. Everybody going to see him. But is he going to say, well done, thy good and faithful servant. Will he call me by my name? Does he know me? Yeah, God knows everybody. But I want that relationship with him. So it's about you today. Do you know him? Thank you for joining us today. We count it an honor and a privilege to minister to you. Connect with us at handsofchristchurch.com. And if you're ever in the Kansas City area, we'd love to meet you. Be sure to tune in every Sunday morning for another powerful message from the Word of God. Be sure to share the podcast on your favorite social media channel.